All right, welcome back to another 2021 MLB Draft Show. Tonight, we have arguably the best prep pitcher in this entire class. We have Andy Painter. Andy, welcome to the show, man. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Of course. Uh, I want to jump right into your summer because over the last couple of years, a lot of people have had their eyes on Andrew Painter as the top arm in this 2021 draft class. Uh, you didn't do anything to dissuade that notion. Kind of talk about how your summer went uh, as compared to maybe some of the expectations that you might have had for it. Uh, the shutdown with COVID just kind of lost over the last nine months for me. Yeah, I mean, I think the uh, the summer went very well. There weren't really any expectations that I had going in just because of COVID and, and everything that was going on in the world. So I didn't really know how summer events were going to work, what that was going to be like. So it was more of I was kind of questioning um, and wondering going in, like I was just curious on how everything was going to work. But um, I mean, going into the quarantine, once we sh once we uh, had the little shutdown, uh, just constantly throwing and working working out, it was it was hard to get all that stuff done. But going to the first event, which was uh, PG National, and every event passing, it really showed that you know all that work paid off in between the high school season and summer bowl. How does going into a you know, a potential lockdown, a potential shutdown as the top pitcher in the class kind of feel because, you know, there's there's 99.9% .9 of the guys out there that are like, I have so much to prove. I have so much to show. I've, you know, grown so much over the last year. But you, you've kind of been atop this proverbial mantle in a way. So what kind of stress and anxiety or, you know, uncertainty came with the last nine months for you? Um, I mean, not much, really. Um, I just kind of stayed to who I was and kept that same work ethic and, and really just trying to work towards one goal and trying to progress and get better and better every day. So I wasn't really stressing about that in the long run, just focusing one day at a time and, and getting better and making sure that I was getting my workout and all my throwing in um, and really just doing anything I needed to do to possibly just, just excel. Yeah. Um, well, let's talk about Andy Painter, the, the pitcher, because you're going to have a lot of eyes on you going into next July. And of course, if you get to campus, the university of Florida, there's going to be a lot of people that know your name. Can you kind of introduce the viewer, the listener, to who Andy Painter is as a person? And then I think most importantly, uh, talk a little bit about your arsenal. Talk about the way that you like to pitch and uh, detail your pitches a little bit. Okay. So, I mean, uh, as a person, I'm from Pompano Beach, Florida, as you said earlier. Um, I'm a senior at Calvary Christian Academy in Fort Lauderdale. I've been there my past four years. Um, off the field, probably see me uh, always smiling. Um, walking around, I'm sure. I'm sure that's that's kind of the personality you guys have seen. So that is true. Uh, then kind of the pitching arsenal. Uh, when I go up there, I'm, I'm kind of my command is probably my strong suit. Um, obviously, the velocity is up there, but I really feel like I can kind of split those plates into quadrants and kind of hit a spot where I want it. Uh, I like to work into batters away. So kind of with the fastball, just really splitting that plate into three or four parts. Um, I'm not afraid to throw any breaking ball, slider, the change of any off speed, really in any count. Um, so probably come to like not only command, but kind of just being comfortable and having a feel for all of my pitches. Uh, I want to, you know, if you're in the stands, you wouldn't be surprised if you saw me throw a three, one slider. I've done it before. I'd probably do it again. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's kind of what you expect. You kind of unexpected, uh, expect the unexpected if you're in the stands watching. Now I want to start with the fastball because that's going to get all the headlines. Um, you are a guy that has reportedly been up to 97, um, in private workouts, have you touched anything higher in that, or is, or is that kind of where you've peaked thus far? No, that's a peak so far. Right now, I've, I've thrown eight bullpens, um, kind of light, uh, still ramping up. I'm throwing live in an inner squat tomorrow. I threw live in an inner squat on Saturday. Um, so right now, it's still on the ramp up. I'm not 100% yet. So kind of just working my way up until, until then. How about your secondary pitches? Because you've got a full, I mean, you got a bullet in, every, in the whole chamber. Uh, Tell me about your secondary pitches. Uh, how about your favorite, something that you like to throw, uh, slider, curveball, changeup, two seam. Tell me about it. Okay, so I'll start off with the slider. The slider is probably the most comfortable pitch uh, mm -hmm. for me, uh, secondary-wise. Uh, I like to. Th that's kind of my go-to if I'm going off speed. Um, that came to me last summer is when I started throwing it. It started as a kind of varied breaking ball, where it was, just, it was the same velocity as the breaking ball. It just had more. Um, horizontal uh, run rather than vertical drop to it. Um, so, I mean, it's just about 82, 83 right now. 
uh, or this past summer it did. So right now I'm trying to just throw that harder with uh, kind of later, sharper break. Uh, the curveball velo on that is usually 78 to 79. Uh, that's more of a loopy 12-6 kind of ish action. Uh, the changeup, just a traditional circle changeup. That's probably where I get most of my swing and misses. Mm -hmm. uh, just because it looks straight like the, the deception on it, straight like a fastball coming in. Uh, then the two seam, I actually just started throwing the two seam this summer. You the, I only threw it a couple times. I was kind of working on it because I went, uh, I was just kind of messed around with the grips. Uh, but this spring uh, in all bullpens, inner squads, just live at bats, when I've been throwing that, it's been 92, 93 with um, depends on sometimes it'll have sinker like run and sometimes it'll run like the uh, kind of with more arm side run to it, depending on where it is in the zone. Okay. Uh, so we mentioned this off air. You're six foot seven. Uh, there's not a lot of you. It's just the way it is. Uh, is there a, is there a player that maybe you've modeled your game after coming up, uh, or you know has this been a growth spurt that's that, that came along and caught you by surprise? Or um, talk about that. Um, so player wise, I go Justin Verlander. He's six six two forty. So it's a pretty similar build there. Uh, not only that, but I've I've worked out with him at, at Cressy Sports Performance. So I've been in there, I've seen him. So everyone kind of sees him on the field and what he does on the field. But uh, I've kind of had the honor and, and kind of the resources to be able to see how he conducts himself off the field and kind of the person he is um, out of baseball. So going off that, um, what is it about Justin Verlander, maybe his work ethic, uh, something about him off the field that you have seen um, up close that has just, you know that it makes a difference? Kind of the attention to details, um, everything he's doing and the effort that he's putting into it. It's kind of 100 percent on anything mm -hmm. he's doing, medicine ball, just throwing, uh, throwing bullpens, kind of just anything. It's always he's really dedicated to it. OK, um, let's talk about a little bit more about this summer. So you had the the chance to play off against a lot of hitters. Uh, you saw a lot of premier talent, the best talent, the best prep talent in the country. Um, is there a, is there a bat that stood out that you thought, man, this guy, he's. He's just different. He's tough to get out. He, he's different than the rest of these hitters. I mean, are we going summer summer events or just summer in general here? Sure. Yeah. Any anybody you want. Okay. Okay. I'll give I'll give one of each here. I'll give okay. I'll give one of one and two of two of the other. So if we're going summer in general, I'd have to go with Anthony Rizzo. That is one you probably don't hear every day. No, it's but, not. <laughs> but then if we're going summer circuit uh, between Lawler or House. Yeah, I, I remember seeing a. And at bat between you and Lawler, and if I'm not mistaken, you gave him a three-two fastball at about the neck, and he drove it into the right field. Yeah, he's just a little bit different, yeah. Yeah, uh, I thought I had him going in one-two. Uh, I left the fastball up. It was supposed to be a two-seam. It didn't really run. Uh, the velo wasn't as high as I wanted it to be on that, and he just he just took it opposite field right down the line. Okay. Talk to us a little bit about Brady House because he may not have gotten the headlines this summer that I think some people might have been expecting with the bat, but physically, and when he gets you, he gets you. Um, you and Brady have kind of just been at the top of the class for a long time together. What is it about Brady's game that you think is going to lead him to success down the road? The bat, just the, the raw power he has. I mean, my bat against him was at East Coast Pro. Um, I threw a fastball into him at 96. He it broke his bat, but he just muscled it through right up the middle. So kind of just the raw power he has. And um, I mean, he doesn't see. I played with him this summer uh, with Team Elite. So just watching every bat, he, he didn't see many you know good pitches. Everyone was kind of pitching yeah. around him. He was seeing a lot of breaking balls. So it's kind of hard when you're at that point. But when he ran into a pitch, like he got a good hold of it, and anything he made solid contact with was was going going the distance. I want to talk to you a little bit about tech as well, because we're moving in a big tech direction here in baseball, uh, track man, rep, Soto, Hawkeye, Edratronic. I mean, you can employ any number of things into a bullpen session that can help you improve. Um, how have you employed those types of tools outside of, you know, the showcases that already have them set up? So I haven't really um, like thrown on a rap Soto that much. I've thrown probably three or four times in a bullpen. Mm -hmm. um, and that was more of just, it was kind of there as a resource we had. I was like, you know, why not use it? Uh, but that was more just velocity. We wouldn't really look at it in depth, but moving forward this spring uh, at the high school, we're getting Yaku Tech installed with the in-game camera. So, I mean, moving forward, it's kind of just going to be monkeying around with all of that data and just seeing, 
seeing how that works and, you know, how it can benefit me. Is there anything specifically about that tech that you would like to uh, maybe implement into your workout? Um, I mean, bullpens and I, I'd like to see the numbers bullpen wise compared to in game, just how those numbers vary. And, and also kind of just the pitches on um, kind of the break they have uh, where my break starts relative to the plate uh, and kind of how much run and it has on it. Okay. So let's talk about the future a little bit. Uh, you've got seven months prior to the 2021 MLB draft. You've also got eight months until you can uh, hop on campus down in Gainesville. Um, what are you hoping to achieve in, in those next you know, several months? How are you looking to grow as a pitcher? Right now, just, just focus on improving all my pitches. Um, really just keep on spotting up and, and making sure I can hit any location uh, moving forward in the spring. Um, working on developing those off speeds to get the velocity up and kind of just, you know, going out on a high note of high school and, and winning a state title. Okay. I got two more questions for you. Uh, this is a, this is one that a lot of people have agreed. If you, if you will, is there a, uh, is there a prep arm in this class that people are sleeping on that you think, you know, that guy, that dog can eat? I mean, Josh Hartle, some people have him really high. Some people not. Um, just watching him pitch where he spots up. There's a lot of people that hitters that, you know, they've talked about him and how uncomfortable of an at-bat it is. Um, so I, he's, he's a sleeper in some sense and then not in, in, you know, other other people's eyes. Um, but definitely for the people that aren't really giving him that love, I, I think he's there. Good name, good name. Uh, all right, last question. Um, last baseball question, we should say. Okay. So – you're going to have obviously the opportunity to, to go to college, but let's say hypothetically you end up uh, going pro. What are some things that you would be looking for in a pro organization that you think could help your development? Maybe what, what kind of a philosophy or culture are you looking for? Uh, really just a, an organization that pays attention to details. Um, it's more hands-on right when you step, you know, on their, you know, on their so-called campus um where they have a strength coach they have you know a throwing coordinator a nutritionist that's really everything is hands-on and and they're involved they get to know you on the personal side and, and get to know your body as well and what you need um to achieve everything that you want and, and accomplish your goals and really just climb up that ladder working your way up to the big leagues i like it man good answer um all right we'll leave you with one question uh this is a, a question that you know we got to keep you on your feet it's not not baseball related um, what is the weirdest fact that Andy Painter knows that not a lot of people know? The weirdest fact? Mm-hmm. I'll tell you, I'll keep you, uh, I'll give you a second to think about it. Benny Montgomery informed us that Pringles are not chips. Okay. <laughs> so, I mean, that's been kind of the clubhouse leader. Um, I don't, I can't remember the other guy. Someone told us that maybe it was Levi Usher at Louisville, that if you look into the sun, it'll make you sneeze. It's involuntary. So, so those are the bars. All right. Hold on. I got a question for you real quick. When you, when okay. you were talking to Benny, did he talk in his Borat accent? <laughs> oh yeah. Benny okay. gave us the full, the full Benny experience, man. Okay. I, I figured he's quite a, <laughs> quite a character. That is, that is a tough question. Weirdest fact. Mm-hmm. You weren't kidding when you said keep you on your toes. Oh, yeah. It kind of sets the bar for your entire pro career. It really does. <laughs> there's there's not, I, I, there's nothing coming to my mind right now. Oh, it's just baseball, 100. Right, uh, what, what if I ask you the question? What if, what if you answer the question? The most interesting fact the host knows, huh? Man, see, I never had it turned on, on my head before. See, I'm keeping you on your feet. All right. All right. Uh, point taken. I don't have anything right now either, but uh, I think I think we'll leave it at that. I think we'll leave it at that. Uh, Andy, it's, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, having you on the show. Um, you know, we've been watching you all summer and uh, we're definitely fans of, of the way you pitch and the way that you take to the mound. So looking forward to seeing what you bring to the mound this spring, moving into July and the MLB draft and potentially the University of Florida. But Andy, thank you for joining the show, man. Thank you for having me. All right.